Hey, it's Celebrate Truth. I'm Robbie Davidson. We got a Fox News article calling the moon startup to put cell phone tower on the moon. This should be interesting. Let's see, shall we? An astronaut wandering the moon next year could use a smartphone to call home. A German startup is preparing to set up the first telecommunication infrastructure on the lunar surface. The German company, Part-Time Scientists, which originally competed for the Google Lunar X Prize Race to the Moon, plans to send a lander with a rover in late 2018 to visit the landing site of Apollo 17, launched in 1972. This was, a, this was NASA's final Apollo mission to the moon. Instead of using a complex, dedicated telecommunication system to relay data from the rover to the Earth, the company will rely on LTE technology, the same system used on Earth for mobile phone communications. <laughs> oh, this is just getting better. Seriously. Do you have a cell phone? Do you have an uh, iPhone? Do you have an Android? What do you have? Do you have something that's like in the last like four years? You got LTE. Okay. I go out into the country, I lose reception, all right? Can you hear me now? I got LTE. They're going to put the system on the moon so that people can talk to people on the moon through a cell phone tower. Oh, let's not use those satellites. Satellites, I thought, were up there. You know, what about a sat phone? You know, related to the satellite, down to Earth. Makes sense. Your infrastructure's there. You got about, what, 20,000 satellites up there? No, 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 no. Let's just go with LTE technology. We know it's so good. We know it works great in areas where there's like no reception or you go out in the country and tower reception is not that strong can you and hear me now? people are getting boosters you know you can go out you know go to best buy buy a booster to boost your your signal you know you see all of these things and yet they're going to send lte technology to the moon with a cell phone tower are you kidding me this is ridiculous we are cooperating with Vodafone in order to provide lte based stations on the moon can you hear me now? Becker, who heads embedded electronics development and integration for the startup, told Space.com. All right, Space, let's hear what she had to say. What we're aiming to do is to provide commercial services to bring goods to the moon and also to provide services on the moon. On the surface of the moon, Becker added, part-time scientist has a launch contract for late 2018 with SpaceX. Oh, they just did a nice little contract to signed on the dotted line. What, they sign in blood? Did Satan actually sign this contract? SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, these private space enterprises are nothing but a joke. They have constantly talked about doing all sorts of things they never do, follow their history as far as businesses. They get sucked up by space agencies such as NASA or the ESA. This is all a complete joke. This is an illusion. Oh, private enterprise, we're going to the moon. We're gonna talk on cell phones. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, yep. I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, that's right, I'm not gonna see it. Falcon 9 rocket, Becker said, the company believes it will be the first private entity to reach the surface of the moon, suggesting that none of the Google Lunar X prize participants are likely to meet the December 2017 deadline for the competition. Part-time scientists itself withdrew from the Google Lunar X prize earlier this year due to the time constraints of the competition. Oh yeah, we just, we just withdrew, you know, too much time going on. We're only part-time. We don't got a lot of time. We're part-time. Understand? Part-time scientists don't have a lot of time. So part-time scientists are actually going to do something that NASA or ESA or anybody else can't do. Yeah, let's just let a part-time scientist group that have only part-time. They don't have full-time to devote. But let's get them, you know, to the moon and let's get them to accomplish that. Yeah, we'll just help them out. That makes a lot of sense. The Falcon 9 will carry a team spacecraft, Alina, to the geostationary transfer orbit, a highly elliptical Earth orbit whose highest point is 26,000 miles or 42,000 kilometers. From there, Alina will continue on its own to the moon. Ooh, Alina's just gonna go to the moon by herself. We will soft land on the moon and disembark our two rovers. Oh, two rovers, not one, two. Oh, I wonder why we have two. The two rovers are essentially mobile phones. Oh, they're rovers. So it's basically a cell phone with wheels. <laughs> All right. Okay, so basically it's mobile phones with wheels that will communicate our video stream to Alina, which will serve as an LTE base station, and Alina will communicate that data to us, he said. All right, the two rovers, oh, which appeared in this year's Alien Covenant film, 
Oh, that's right. Because the Hollywood loves to throw it out there and get everyone like, ooh, it was in the movie. Now they're going to do it. Ooh, Star Trek. We're going to have this and we're going to do this and we're going to go to these planets. Oh, look at that. Going to the moon, going to Mars. What was it? They went to the Mars. All this push to go to Mars. Where are they? They're not even close to Mars yet. Weren't they supposed to be at Mars last year? You know, constant, constant. You see this time and time again. It's what, 43 years they haven't been back to the moon and yet part-time scientists are gonna get to the moon? Give me a break. They don't even have full time to devote to the project. They're part-time scientists. They're not even scientists. This is just a big, absolute sham. But of course they are linking up. They're gonna make this great with LTE and they're gonna they're gonna link arms with Vodafone. Oh, all right. The rover gets 90 watts of energy. 90 watts, that's powerful stuff, man. Powerful, yeah. Okay, solar panels, half of which goes to driving. Okay, all right. So yeah, you're down to, oh, okay, 45. You got 45 watts. What does that 45 watts do if, uh, you know, half of it goes to driving? Your phone's with wheels. Previously, the other half would have to go to the modem for communicating directly to the earth. Okay, yeah, makes sense, yeah. Makes a lot of sense, 45 watts of energy beaming voice transmission signals to the earth what 238,000 miles away for anyone that doesn't understand these distances think of the furthest trip you've gone it could be on a cruise it could be on a plane it doesn't matter then times that by like a hundred we're talking 238,000 miles to the moon and yet 45 watts of energy because half of it is devoted to driving you know we could we couldn't get anything more powerful we could only get a 45 watts of energy because driving takes a lot so that's going to beam the communication to the earth yeah okay but lte it's so powerful i have it on my cell phone and i can just go anywhere all over the earth and it works fine no it doesn't but again they're going to put a cell tower on the moon like this makes any sense additionally Relaying data via the base station rather than directly to Earth solves difficulties with pointing the rover's antenna in the rough lunar terrain. Yeah, that's true. It is pretty rough up there, isn't it? Really rough. He said part-time scientist does not expect Alina and the rovers to survive the lunar night because of the extreme low temperatures. That's right, because space gets incredibly cold, incredibly hot. But wait a minute, you got all those satellites in the thermosphere. Ah, oh, they're just doing fine you know basically all the materials on those satellites you know basically melt completely at all these different degrees but yet yeah, no nah, it's okay they just work and they just never break down and nothing ever hits them you know and heck we're not going to use them we've got like 20,000 of them but no nah, let's not use them for communication no nah, let's just use an LTE cell phone tower all right we're trying to show that you can use the most widespread means of communication which is the mobile network and particularly the LTE network on the surface of the moon. Can you hear me now? To execute missions there, said Becker, we are aiming to provide cost-effective solutions to problems that are arising in terms of building the lunar village. <laughs> the lunar village. Oh, so basically we gotta put cell phone towers before we can build a village. That makes sense. It totally makes sense now. Think about it, think about it. How are you gonna have a village on the moon if you can't talk to one another, you need cell phone towers, you know, forget about just wiring it in old school style, but no, let's get cell phone towers because that's the main priority when you're building a lunar village. You know, who's going to live up there? Are we taking calls from the moon? Can I call them? Hey, how's it going, man? Ah, oh, just on the moon, just hanging out in my uh, lunar village just got built. Ah, oh, that's cool, man. Well, see you in a few years. No, I'm not coming back, man. I'm staying on the moon. According to Becker, part-time scientists plan to conduct a second mission Dun, 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 around 2020. That would carry LTE terminal design to survive in the harsh lunar environment. Oh, for extended periods of time. There you go, guys. Yeah, you figure that out. Figure out those really cold temperatures. And, and yeah, you just put your little part-time brains together and you, just, you can kind of think it all through. The company is closely cooperating with ESA, European Space Agency. Of course they are. Of course they're going to cooperate with them. Hey, uh, look at guys, uh, we got some part-time scientists here that uh, they're going to actually uh, put some really cool uh, cell phone towers and neat rovers that were in movies on the moon. Uh, let's give them a hand. Let's not do it ourselves. You know, we've got all the infrastructure and we're the government and stuff. But no, let's just, let's give them a hand. Come on, business. We're all for business. You know, big business. We're all for making businesses grow. So let's just give these part-time scientists a hand because, man, they got, they got lives. They don't have full time to devote to this. They only got part time. So let's give them the other half of that effort to really make this succeed. 
which has proposed a lunar village concept. Of course, there's the, the village. You need you need cell phone towers. Can you hear me you now? Know, not just to communicate to Earth, talk to one another. When you're on the moon, you're hanging out, you're going to the bar, you know, you're kind of hanging out. Hey, kids, where are you going? Um, oh, we're going to the playground, you know. Don't, don't fly away, you know. What would lead to a permanent human presence on the surface of the moon? Oh, I wonder how long they've got this projected when they're going to have a permanent human presence on the moon, living in their lunar village. Hmm. The agency's plan would let all nations and entities contribute to the overall operations with their unique skills and expertise. Oh, thank you so much. The Alina spacecraft can carry up to 100 kilograms, 220 pounds, a payload. Wow, impressive. Not during its first mission, the craft will carry three custom payloads, including an experiment designed by NASA. Hey, NASA, got to get in there. Hey, uh, guys, you got three payloads? Can we be one? ESA is like, guys, guys, you guys are amazing. You guys are building a lunar village, man. We can. We don't even know what's going on. Can we put a payload? You know, what is it? The part-time scientists, part-time, you know, put a part-time parcel together for their payload. And then NASA and the ESA got the other, you know, parcels, you know. Hey, it, it can't weigh over 220 pounds. That's, that's heavy duty stuff, man. 222 pounds, that's heavy. Uh, yeah, but it, it's coming to uh, 230. No, man, NASA, you gotta get your stuff off. You gotta reduce it. We can't get your stuff up. Think about this, honestly. You're gonna, basically, part-time scientists are gonna accomplish this with the aid of ESA and NASA, you know, putting a payload on there, you know, might as well, gotta get some credit. Seriously, this is absolutely ridiculous. They're talking about going to Mars. They have rovers on Pluto. This is NASA. This is what they claim. And yet they're going to basically let part-time scientists upstage them with, oh, but but it's branding. We're going to make some money with uh, Vodafone and we're going to do commercial, you know, uh, branding up there with uh, their logo. Oh, come on. Seriously. Silly, silly, silly. And yet people buy this. They buy this. Look at this. This looks just a tad better than the actual Apollo made from like tin foil and masking tape. This is silly. What is this? This is something you could buy at a store you put together. It's like your kids put this together in like a, one of those boxes for models. I mean, this is ridiculous that they're going to go 238,000 miles away. Part-time scientists accomplish something that no other space agency has ever accomplished. Building cell phone towers through LTE. Thanks to Vodafone for helping with their brand and having their identity on the moon right next to Apollo 17. Okay, it's enough of this. You've seen enough, I'm sure you have. Bookmark this video, subscribe, like this video, add it to your playlist, whatever you need to do, because you can come back. How about December 15th, 2018? Because they say they're going in late. Let's just give them a little bit of, you know, a little bit more time. Let's go right to December 20th. How's that? December 20th, 2018. Come back to this video. Nothing will have happened. There'll be no LTE cell towers. Part-time scientists will probably be having a part-time vacation. And we won't hear from them again. Because this is ridiculous. Let's keep exposing the world's lies. Celebrate truth. Take care, guys.